So let's start by talking about calcium, which is an extremely important mineral in the body, and realizing that total calcium is comprised of kind of three major parts. So about half of the total calcium is free or ionized calcium. And so that's ionized calcium. See with an I in front of it or two little pluses. And this is free calcium, meaning it's not bound to anything. So this is the calcium that actually influences other things. So the amount of ionized calcium goes to the parathyroid gland and tells PTH what to do. It contributes to pathologic states. Um, this is what is kind of the controlling calcium in the body. And it's, again, part of this entire thing together is what determines total calcium. So another really large component of total calcium is bound calcium. And that is mostly bound to albumin. So we're going to write calcium plus albumin. And this is around 40 to 45% of total calcium, where again, ionized is around 50%. And so calcium bound to albumin, of course, means that albumin levels are going to influence our calcium level. So our total calcium level is going to be influenced by albumin levels because almost half of our total calcium is actually bound. There's another part that's bound that's complexed with other things, and this is around 5 to 10%. And those other things um, are not easily measured, but those other things are things like lactate and phosphates uh, and things that can change on a daily basis. And so that can also influence our calcium levels. Those are harder to measure, though. All right, again, so our total, serums com total serum calcium is comprised of our free calcium comprising 50%, and that's the regulatory calcium. And then the other part that we really cared about is our type, our calcium that's actually bound to albumin. And that's why it's going to, our albumin levels will determine and influence our total calcium, but not our ionized calcium. So let's talk about other things that determine calcium levels in the body. All right, so one thing is the age of our patient. So puppies have higher total calcium. So if you're using an adult reference range, they will, compared to adults, they will have an elevated calcium level. So that's item one. The next, which I already mentioned, is actually how much albumin you have in your body. So our albumin concentration is going to determine our total calcium. but not our ionized calcium. Again, ionized calcium is free. So we have to look at our albumin concentration. So if we have decreased albumin, you can get a decrease in total calcium. So you have to consider that when you look at blood work. All right, a third thing that contributes and determines kind of calcium is our GI absorption. Well, what does this actually mean to us? Well, this means that animals with severe um, intestinal disease, such as protein losing enteropathy, or issues with integrity um, or absorption, are going to impact calcium absorption, and that could decrease it. Horses, we had that, that horse case with diarrhea, they have an enormous amount of GI tract. They do not rely on their kidneys for renal activation of vitamin D, and so they're very reliant on dietary calcium and GI function, so they can become hypocalcemic with GI disease. Also, um, we'll talk about certain toxins that cause massive GI reabsorption of calcium. So GI absorption is a big place for calcium absorption. All right, the next one is bone. And this kind of goes along when we talk about the puppies. Um, and so resorption of bone, calcium versus deposition of calcium, and that's going to be influenced by um, PTH, vitamin D, and calcitonin. So it's not that bone itself, except for puppies, tells you what's happening with calcium or influences it. It's how the hormones are acting on bone. Okay, the next one, number five, kidneys, right? So kidney function 
except for the horse, kidney function is extremely important for calcium regulation because vitamin D activation happens in the kidneys in all species except the horse and horse-related type species. So anytime you have decreased renal function, the majority of those cases, usually 85 to 95%, will become hypocalcemic. All right, the last thing to talk about is calcium times phosphorus interaction. So these guys, if, they, if their product is greater than 70, we can see mineralization. And when you see mineralization, one, it's bad for the body, um, but also that can impact calcium and phosphorus levels as well. But what's more important is that you can have mineralization in the body, which is not a good thing, especially if the levels are very high. And the big areas that we worry about mineralizing are the lungs, um, and this is called metastatic mineralization, um, and then the kidneys as well. I'm going to go through differentials of hyper and hypocalcemia um, in separate lectures over the next couple of days.